Uh, good morning. Um, first of all, thank you very much for providing me the opportunity to present this paper. So this is a, a paper with uh, Gilles Duranton uh, from University of Toronto and Jacques Thies from the Center for Operational Research and Econometrics uh, in Belgium. So these are uh, urban economists. Um, and this is actually the first time I present this result. So this is very preliminary. So any kind of comments, even a radically different approach would be uh, very useful and also all the things I learned during the conference will be also very useful. Uh, I will try at the end of the presentation also to make a connection with what Luis just presented about uh, occupation because I think there are some nice, nice links. Um, so I will be very short on, on this, but regarding the motivation, um, I think that uh, yesterday we've seen that there is kind of strong evidence of um, that uh, structural transformation is associated with economic development. However, I think that still very little is known about the, the determinants of structural transformation. What could drive this, uh, this process? Um, so that's what I will try to do today. And for those who are interested, uh, I make uh, some con connection in the paper, which is on the website, uh, with a recent literature on uh, assessing uh, the, existence of, the existence of uh, multiple equilibria. But so what we try to do is by exploiting a, a natural experiment, and you will see that we use uh, actually very micro level data, we try to see whether a certain refugee inflows uh, may actually induce a structural transformation in the refugee hosting uh, area, in the refugee hosting economy. And we try then to see what kind of channels may drive uh, this structural transformation. So, as I told you, these results are very preliminary because uh, we, we hope to obtain a new wave of data that would make us more confident that uh, the story I will tell you is really, really uh, the one going on. So, contrary to some paper here, uh, which are more macro, here I will focus on a very particular region, which is the regions of, of Kagera uh, in Tanzania, in northwestern Tanzania. Um, and what is particular for that region, it has, it has hosted about one million refugees coming from Burundi in 1993 and Rwanda in 1994. So just to give you a sense of the magnitude, there are about 700,000 refugees in a region of about 1.5 million people. Um, and these refugees inflows were very unexpected. It was huge in magnitude. But despite the fact that the phenomenon was huge, the impact were, was very localized. And the reason was mainly the fact that refugees could not move freely from the camp beyond four kilometers around the refugee camps. Uh, they could go outside, for example, to work in the agricultural fields uh, with a permission, but they had to come back overnight. Uh, and when you, I think when you start to, to look at this issue, it's very, very important to take some distance with some misleading views on refugee camps. So we tend to perceive ref refugee camps as a mass of unorganized tents occupied by um, passive refugees. But actually, in the case study, we will see refugees stay for quite a long time. And they make important decisions uh, about consumption, about production. And this has important implication for the refugee hosting economy. Um, so this is related to, uh, to uh, another paper I did. So uh, I, did, uh, I had some fieldwork observation. Uh, and uh, from interviews, uh, it appears quite quickly that the, the main uh, channels, the main um, uh, imp reported effects of these refugees inflows on the hosting population should occur through the labor market and the good market. So, for example, on the good market, refugees constitute a very cheap labor force to work on the agricultural fields, so that agricultural production is reported to have doubled sometimes around refugee camps. But what could be also interesting is that uh, it seems that the non-agricultural activity seems to have mushroom around the refugee camp. So, um, and, and this is also due to the entry of new entrepreneurs coming from other regions and opening uh, small businesses. Uh, and just uh, to, to, to extend a little bit the, this list of reported effects, a lot of people talk also about the reduced transport cost, 
improve health and sanitation services provided to the local population, but also some very strong negative externalities like environmental degradation, the spread of disease, or uh, insecurity, for example. So, um, there have been uh, recent empirical evidence uh, looking at these effects. So, just to give you uh, uh, a sense of of uh, the recent literature. So Alex Garcia assesses, for example, the short-run uh, impact on, on prices, um, on food prices. Uh, in another paper, I look at distributional effect uh, based on the labor and good markets, and that's why I will make some connection with uh, Louis' uh, Louis, uh, presentation uh, at the end. And Baez assesses uh, the detrimental impact on children, children, children health. But what's the relationship with structural transformation? I think that actually uh, no paper, including mine, is able to explain why the average positive impact on the refugee hosting population persists even in areas where the refugees left about eight, eight years before. So there is a kind of hysteresis effect that we fail to explain. Um, just uh, in the paper, in, in the first table, we, we show further that, that uh, in, in the post-treatment uh, proxy that we use, there remain actually only less than 10% of the refugees. So if you just want to explain this effect by the labor market, uh, when the refugees go back, something else should be going on. Uh, also, the direct effect of the presence of the refugees remains strong and significant. Uh, even when you control for the impact through the good and the labor market. And the, the, the impact is also very strong for refugees from Rwanda, even if the refugees from Rwanda, they were forced to leave in 1996. So the question is whether a process of structural transformation can actually explain this hysteresis effect. So um, we have also some anecdotal evidence suggesting that uh, uh, this uh, process of structural transformation might going on on the field. Uh, for example, during our field work, we observed that sleepy and even desert places before the refugees arrive remain very active marketplaces, even when the refugees left for some years after. Uh, and this is partil particularly true for the non-agricultural activities. Uh, this hysteresis effect may also come from the urban uh, function that have been endorsed by the refugee camps. These are kind of medium-sized cities, so they have some kind of urban function on the local economy. And the presence of the humanitarian aid uh, is also expected to strengthen urbanization process uh, in this area. So I try to use data to check uh, the, whether this process is going on. So, I just look at the a basic definition of structural transformation in the textbook uh, because I didn't know much about it before. Uh, and for me, there are some kind of two conditions that needs to be, to be met. Uh, you need to find a kind of significant change in equilibria, so a significant change in economic outcomes or welfare, and an increased reliance on the non-agricultural sector. So to check that, uh, I use the KHDS data set, which has been referred to by, by uh, Stefan Derkon, and he was involved in collecting the data with the World Bank, which is a very detailed um, uh, household uh, data set. Um, so as Alan was talking, one of the particularity of this data set is that it follows the migrants if, even if they move um, uh, to another region or to another country. And you can also uh, incorporate in the analysis uh, the household members who have created a new household uh, by 2004, so what is called the split of households. But uh, so we exploit this data uh, using two types of heterogeneities. So we have data about exactly the same household before and after the refugees arrived. And thanks to our fieldwork, we are also able to, to compute the distance between each village and each refugee camp. So the, the identification strategy is very simple. We will look at several, um, measure, uh, several dependent variables that I will explain later on. And we try to see what is the impact of the presence of the refugees on the economic outcomes at the also level, controlling for also characteristics, village characteristics, uh, also and village fixed effect. 
So the way we measure the exposure to the refugee present is simply to take the, the sum of the refugee population weighted by the distance between the concerned village and each refugee camp. But so ba basically, just to give you the intuition, what we are doing, we are comparing the changes in economic outcomes of also living very close to refugee camps, which is our treatment group, compared to also living far away from refugee camps, which constitute our, our control group. So it's a very simple um, uh, identification strategy. So as I told you, uh, f for me at least before this conference, structural transformation was about these two conditions. First of all, uh, does it change uh, the economic income? So we found that the refugee prisons uh, significantly increase consumption per adult equivalent, real consumption per adult equivalent at the also level. Uh, and this is consistent with what, what was observed uh, on the field. Uh, we also check whether the presence of refugees would significantly increase other economic outcomes like nominal income, real income, and uh, the value of durable assets. Uh, so just to give you an idea, uh, for example, doubling the presence of refugees would increase uh, uh, the income by about uh, 20%. So it's, it's a very large effect. What appears also is that the presence of refugees significantly increase the dependence of the household uh, on uh, non-agricultural income. So we take here as a dependent variable the share of income generated from the non-agricultural sector uh, for each household. Um, and so again, this is again comparing those very close to refugee camps to, to um, uh, those living far away. So something might be going on related to structural transformation. So, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> I will be very short on that, um, but uh, this is one of the main points of the paper. Uh, of course, um, the identification strategy rests on three uh, main assumptions. First of all, there might be an attrition problem. So you might think that people tend to die or to migrate without being traced in a much higher proportion in areas close to refugee camps compared to other, to other areas. Um, and, and then what we would pick up is simply the fact that those remaining are just more able to adjust to such a shock. Actually, you can get rid of this explanation very quickly. Um, so in table four, five, six, uh, we, we gave some evidence, but uh, we show that the immigration rate and the attrition rate is much lower in refugee hosting area compared to other areas. And this is again consistent with the observation that given the economic activities around refugee camps, this was rather an attraction force than a, a dispersion force. We also show that the probability to migrate decreases uh, in refugee hosting area compared to other areas, and that our baseline result about structural transformation is strengthened when you include the migrants uh, in the sample. The second assumption is about exogeneity. <laughs> By um, using politically motivated migrants, uh, you already avoid a problem with economic migrants that they can actually select the best places. So actually, um, this, mi this might m mess out uh, the, the identification. But still, you might think that the location of the refugee camps might be related to unobserved characteristics at the, at the, uh, uh, of, at the village level. Um, so this, this might be the case if, for example, refugees are able to select the best places, or if local authorities, for example, would foresee the economic benefits of having these refugees and would influence the decision of the location. So. Um, we give some qualitative evidence, actually, that uh, um, it was not at all in the control of the refugees or the local authorities, uh, this decision of location. It was mainly a security issue, so it was mainly a decision by the Ministry of Home Affairs and uh, the UN Agency for Refugees. But, and, and there are actually very few room of maneuver to select the location of the refugee camps uh, mainly for cost issues. It was impossible for UNHCR to move these refugees very far away, even by truck. They were too numerous. Uh, but even if you don't believe in this qualitative argument, uh, what we do is we regress the presence of refugees on exactly the same characteristics in 1991, 
Okay, including uh, the economic outcomes in, in 1991. And what you show, you can also take the difference between 1993 and 1991, is that these refugees, they were located in the worst places uh, in terms of economic outcomes before the refugees arrived. And this is even true if you restrict the sample to the two districts bordering uh, Burundi and Rwanda. So at least if there is an endogeneity bias, or, or baseline resu result are actually uh, lower bond estimates. Um, so we feel a little bit confident about this. And finally, for the last assumption, is the common trend assumption. So we assume that those also living close to refugee camps will, will follow a similar trajectory than uh, also far away in case the refugees would not have come. So uh, we implement a placebo test showing that if you make as if the refugees were coming in 1993, uh, we cannot actually um, uh, say that the or baseline result would be due to a trend existing before the refugees arrived. Okay, so I, I think I, I tried to, to tell you that uh, we, we might have something related to structural transformation. But so I think the most interesting thing would be to investigate the channels of transmission. So for that, our fieldwork observation point to three main uh, candidates, uh, which are national organization invest heavily in roads. Um, so this might be uh, one explanation for this hysteresis effect. And agglomeration economies, anecdotal evidence, uh, suggests that a lot of migrants were attracted by these economic activities around the refugee camps. And the difference with the refugees is that these migrants May not, uh, may not necessarily leave when the refugees left. So you might have a concentration of population that create agglomeration economies. So we test the plausibility of, it, of this channel, so I think I will be very short on that. We use the same specification. Uh, unfortunately, we cannot put this intermediate variable on the right-hand side of the previous specification because then uh, you have a lot of endogeneity problem. But we assess... Uh, the impact of the refugee presence on the access to public goods, uh, on several measurements of road accessibility, is going from the distance to the road networks, but also using uh, buffers of different size around, around villages to have an idea of road accessibility. And uh, we use uh, village population and population density. And then we assess also other um, uh, explanation rela related to time varying village characteristics. Um, but so just to give you a, a flavor of what we found, our data actually does not seem to suggest that the location, okay, the provision of uh, local public goods was the main driver. Uh, it's it's uh, a, a not significant and we check for the identifying assumption. The most important impact seems to be on road accessibility. So the presence of refugees uh, strongly increase road accessibility and this might be very important in regions where remoteness is one of the most uh, one of the main determinants of poverty and agglomeration economy seems to be um, uh, going on so uh, the refugee presence has a, a, a strong uh, impact on village population and population density even when the refugees left for some years um, so this might be one explanation so just to conclude, uh, I tried to show you that uh, um, the refugees' inflows has induced uh, structural transformation, so an increased dependence on the non-agricultural sector in terms of income, and this has been associated with improved uh, economic income outcomes in terms of income, consumption, or assets. At the moment, we have two main suspects for the channels of transmission, which are uh, improved road uh, accessibility and agglomeration economies. But uh, as I told, uh, this is really a work in progress, so I think we, we, we really focus on structural transformation in terms of outputs uh, to, to refer to Derek's paper. Uh, but actually, in our previous paper, we look at occupational mobility, uh, and this is uh, quite in line with uh, what Louis showed about we use a, a fixed effect logic to look at the probability to enter into new activities and this is quite in line uh, with uh, what she shows. And uh, we found also in our previous paper that in inequality in refugee hosting area increased very much. So this is also, that's something I'd like to, to, to continue. Um, also, we, 
using a new way for household data would make also more confident that we are really capturing an, uh, an hysteresis effect. So we hope to obtain this data from the World Bank. Um, and of course, I'm sorry to say that, but one of the channels of transmission that we have not yet investigated is agricultural productivity. But for this, uh, I'm kind of puzzled. I'd like to have your comments in the sense that I have two time periods. So I don't know exactly what kind of interpretation I could give to a change in agricultural produ productivity because it's an intermediate variable but also an outcome. And just to, to refer to one paper yesterday, I don't know whether I would be on the left side or the right, right side of the uh, no famous uh, Macmillan Roderick uh, U. Your curve, so uh, it's difficult for me to to find the interpretation. Uh, last point, yeah. Um, so uh, as I said, uh, the caveat is that we are not yet able to to test one channel of transmission against another. Uh, but if we reduce the plausible channels of transmission, we would then be able to use instruments to to test it. Or uh, another possibility would be to build a theoretical model and to implement a structural estimation uh, on the model. Uh, thank you.